exterior de España. English Language Service. For 22 years now, the Festival Documental Madrid has been bringing contemporary and experimental documentaries from the camera closer to Madrid's audiences. This year, the focus is on archive memory and social and political cinema. Luis Pérez, art director in Cineteca Matadero, tells us more about what they have planned for this edition. And we think that around archival images, we can have an idea of the world today. And the world today is like a political, strange moment. We don't know where we are going to. And I think the to look back help us to know. After that, we look into the not so bright side of the Spanish audiovisual industry. Director Almudena Carracedo tells us about the report After Silence, Impact of Sexual Abuse and Sexual Violence Against Women in the Cinema and Audiovisual Industry, which was released last month by the Spanish Association of Women Filmmakers and Audiovisual Media. <laughs> You are listening to the English language broadcast of Spanish National Radio, where we bring Spain to you through short waves. My name is Egan and Marilyn Quintana, the director of Concern Technician Jesus Carreras, and production help from Cristina Dorado and Marta Quintana. Before we get to the rest of the broadcast, the news. More than 1.4 billion Catholics in the whole world are expectant for the election of a new pope. The conclave began on Wednesday, more than two weeks after the passing of Pope Francis. 133 cardinals have the right to vote, and a majority of two-thirds, that is 89 votes, is required to elect the 267th Pope. With no clear successor, experts agree that the new Pope will be a consensus candidate, that is, someone who can unify a church that has been subjected to divisions under Francis's pontificate. Among the challenges ahead, the new Pope will need to face the debate around the role of women, sexual abuses in the church, and international instability. Back in Spain on Monday morning, Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez appeared before Congress for the first time after the historic blackout hit the Iberian Peninsula. Prime Minister Sánchez pledged to get to the bottom of the causes that led to the blackout and promised absolute transparency. He also criticized the theory that linked the blackout to the lack of nuclear energy and called for the reopening of power plants. No deja de ser paradójico que los mismos que acusan al Ejecutivo de no haber dado aún ninguna información sobre el apagón... It's paradoxical that those who accuse the government of not giving any information about the blackout have been recommending a solution for days. A solution that consists on their ideological agenda and the interest of some energy companies that balance power plants energéticas que tienen propiedad en las centrales nucleares. Still, the power cut has opened a debate about the need for nuclear energy. Ignacio Araluce, president of the Nuclear Forum, stated that, quote, the logical thing would be to rethink the closure of the power plants, end quote. Prime Minister Sanchez responded, saying that power plants need to meet three criteria to extend their operating area. Uno, seguridad ciudadana. Seguridad en el suministro eléctrico y tres, que lo paguen las empresas, no el contribuyente pagando más factura de la luz. One, citizen security. Two, security in the electric supply. And three, that the companies pay for it, not the citizens paying a higher electricity bill. He added that the investigation to clear up the causes will take time, according to sources from the Ministry for the Ecological Transition.